This morning, we hear a flashback to our Maundy Thursday Gospel. We have the, uh, the new commandment where Jesus tells us uh, that if we want to be his disciples, that we are to love one another as he has loved us. And by doing so, everyone will know that we are his disciples. And that's pretty hard to do sometimes. It can be hard to do. It can be hard to, uh, to love one another, and, and especially the way uh, that Jesus loves us. It can be really hard to do that, but we're still called uh, to do our best uh, to do that. And it's particularly uh, difficult uh, as uh, uh, English speakers here in the United States because uh, the English language uh, has built into it uh, some baggage surrounding that word love. It's, it's very difficult in English because there's only one word in English for love. There's only one word for love. If I want to tell my wife that I love her, it's the same word that I would use to tell my friends that I love them. It's the same word that I would tell my parents that I love them. It's the same word. We only have one word to convey all of these different spectrums within the same emotion. Whereas uh, other languages don't have that same difficulty. Uh, for instance, the Spanish language has different words for love. And in Spanish, if I want to tell my romantic partner that I love her, I would say te amo. Right? That's a different kind of love than if I wanted to tell my friends, in which case I would say te quiero. So there's a, there's a difference in intensity there, and it makes it easier to convey that idea of love. Right? And, and in the Greek language, there are even more uh, words for love. We have the word agape love, which is a friendly love. That's a love that we share with one another, right? And then we have the eros love. Eros love is that romantic love that you would share with a romantic partner. And then there's philo love. There's philo love, which is the brotherly love. It's a brotherly kind of love. And we know that if, if we break down the, the name of the city, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, we know that Adelphoi is brother and Philo is love. So Philadelphia is the city of brotherly love and is subsequently the uh, least appropriately named city in the United States, I think. <laughs> because I have been to Philadelphia <laughs> and I was not feeling the love. <laughs> but the name of the city means literally uh, brotherly love. And uh, so there are different ways to express that emotion in, in other languages, and we're kind of limited as English speakers. We're kind of limited, right? but we can't let ourselves be limited. Right? Jesus tells us in the gospel to love one another, and along with loving one another means that we, sh we have to tell each other that we love each other. Right? And it can be hard. It can be hard because of that baggage associated with that word. If somebody says, uh, Tim, I love you, well, then I've... Then I get a little uncomfortable. Do you, do you mean like in a romantic way? Do you mean in a friendly way? What do you mean, right? So, so it, can be, it can be uncomfortable to tell somebody that, that you love them and it can be uncomfortable when somebody tells you that they love you because there's so much baggage. We don't know, we have ambiguity. But here, here's what we're supposed to do is we are supposed to love one another and we are supposed to tell each other that we love each other. Okay? And particularly uh, males in our society, men in our society have difficulty expressing love for one another, for each other. Uh, I, I've noticed that, that, that females uh, have, have a, a, an okay time expressing love, but males seem to struggle. And because of that, there's a lot of pain and a lot of hurt right, that, that men experience throughout their entire lives, throughout their entire lives. So, so here's something for, for you fathers. If you are dads, make sure to tell your kids that you love them. Make sure to tell your sons that you love them. Show them that you love them and show them often. Right? Tell them to the point when, it's, when, it, when you think you've, you've said it enough so much that you're uncomfortable and then keep doing it. Keep telling them that you love them and keep showing them that you love them. Because that is, is so important to heal some of those hurts that a lot of men carry around with them uh, for their entire lives. Men especially, but it can happen to anybody, right? not just men, it, it, I've noticed especially men, but it's anybody. We need to experience love. We need to feel love, right? We need to feel that others love us, and uh, we need to show love in return, because that's what Jesus is calling us to do. And there are lots of ways that we can do that. There are lots of ways that we can show our love. For instance, the other day, my, my grandsons were in town, and 
they showed their love to me by spending a, a whole day with me, a whole day with, with, with Noni Tim, Grandpa Tim. They, they got to spend the whole day with me, and they showed me their love by playing. We played dinosaurs together. I was the, uh, uh, my, my grandson was, was the Utah Raptor, and I was the T-Rex. We chased each other around. We went to the park, and we played on the swings, right? And uh, we, we had a whole fun day together. To the point where, uh, when it was time for dinner, these two little boys were eating fistfuls of bread, fistfuls of bread, and their mom says to me, uh, "What did, what did you feed them for lunch?" <laughs> and I said, "Lunch." So love is also uh, forgiving Noni Tim <laughs> for forgetting. To, uh, to feed these two young boys, two and four years old, for getting to feed them lunch. They had plenty of candy, so they, so they, had, they had calories coming in, but they didn't have any sustenance coming in. But, but those, those are expressions of love. There are lots of ways that we can show our love to the world. And we've been talking lately a lot about ministry and the importance of ministry. And ministry is certainly one of those ways that we share uh, our love in the world. And, and I want to make sure that you hear me say this because I, I'm very proud of this place because you do such a good job of showing love to the world through your ministry. There's so many different ministries that you do that show your love to the world. We talked you know, a little bit last week about uh, things like powwow and veterans ministries. There's so many uh, active ministries and ways that uh, you show your love to the world. And we're leading up now uh, to our ministry fair on Pentecost Sunday, which will be an opportunity to showcase uh, some of those ministries. Because last week we talked about uh, listening to the voice of Jesus and knowing when, when we hear his voice. Right? So it, we're in the middle of, of this process of fine-tuning that radio uh, that's playing his voice right, to tell us uh, where we are called to serve next. And uh, it's important for us to uh, think about uh, other areas of ministry because uh, some of those ministries are very active and have remained very active during the course of the pandemic, but other ministries became a little bit less necessary uh, during the pandemic time because we weren't worshiping uh, in the building. And so some of those ministries became a little less necessary and because of that there have been uh, some people who aren't doing those ministries quite as, as much anymore. And so we want to we, we wanna build on what we've been doing and we want to revitalize those ministries and keep them going strong, right, and build them up strong. So today I'm going to talk to you about three of those ministries and I want you to pay attention to the voice of Jesus and see if maybe Jesus is calling you uh, to step into uh, some of these ministries and maybe others, right? because it could be others, but I want to showcase three of them. First one I want to talk about this morning is our music ministry uh, here at St. John the Baptist. Now, I want to make sure that you know that uh, this parish has uh, an incredible identity surrounding music. I think you should be proud of your music here because uh, we have several different expressions of music and these are expressions that, that many Episcopal parishes are not ready to experience, they're not re ready to express. And so the, uh, the fact that you are expressing yourselves musically through liturgy with these different expressions of music uh, is an incredible and wonderful thing. And I want you to be proud of that. I want you to be proud that we have, for instance, a joyful noise choir that sings with us from time to time. That we have a praise band that sings with us from time to time. That is, that is a unique thing. and That's something that this parish has decided that it wants to do as part of its identity. I also want you to be proud of projecting the bulletins on the screen. So when we have the words to the songs, we can project them on the screen. That, that is remarkable. Now, most Episcopal parishes are not ready for that. And so I think you should be proud, I think you should be proud that that's something that you're doing. And I also want you to take a peek in the, in the back of the pew in front of you, where, where the bookcase is, right? And notice that we have two different hymnals, two different hymnals. We have the standard 1982 hymnal, and I, I guarantee you that just about any Episcopal church you wander into in the country is going to have the 82 hymnal. But there's another hymnal there. We have three approved hymnals. Uh, in the Episcopal Church. We have the 82 hymnal, 
We have the supplement to the 82 hymnal, which is a smaller green book. It's called Wonder, Love, and Praise. And we do sing from Wonder, Love, and Praise from time to time. That, that's, a, that's a supplemental uh, hymn. And if you look at the numbers in Wonder, Love, and Praise, they're actually continued uh, from the 1982 hymnal. And then we have a third hymnal called Lift Every Voice and Sing. Lift Every Voice and Sing. And not, uh, not every Episcopal congregation uh, sings from Lift Every Voice and Sing. And I, I think uh, you should be proud that we sing from Lift Every Voice and Sing because it gives us uh, another expression, another way that we, can, uh, that we can express ourselves liturgically through music with, with, with different hymns. And you may notice that at least, at least one time every Sunday we sing a hymn from Lift Every Voice and Sing. And that is something that many Episcopal parishes are not ready for. So I want you to be proud of that. I want you to be proud of that. And I also uh, want you to think about uh, your own expression of music. Right? I want you to think about how you express yourself musically. And maybe, maybe that voice of Jesus is telling you that, hey, why don't you, uh, why don't you participate in the chancel choir? Why don't you participate in the praise band? Why don't you participate in the joyful noise choir? Right? If somebody tells you, hey, did you know that you have a, a, a beautiful voice? Maybe that's actually Jesus speaking through that person and telling you, hey, why don't you consider becoming involved in the music ministry? And by the way, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to do the music ministry. Uh, I, I attend choir practice from time to time, and we have some fun doing that. It's, it's only a commitment of just a few hours a week. It's just, uh, you know, just one hour on a, on a Wednesday night once a week, and then, and then a couple hours on Sunday morning. So it's, so it's a lot of fun. And I, I would actually be involved in the choir. I'm a little busy. <laughs> I'm a little busy doing other things, but otherwise I would, I would be in the choir. Okay? So maybe, maybe the voice of Jesus is tell, telling you, be, be in one of our fantastic choirs and, and express ourselves, help this church to express ourselves musically and to help us to lift every voice and sing. Right? Because that's a, what the choir does, is it helps, helps us to, to know where, where, where and when we're supposed to sing, because we can listen to the choir to tell us, to, to let us know, to give us those cues. Right? So that's, that's the first ministry I wanna highlight today. The second is a ministry called the Ushers. The ushers, uh, and, and this is a uh, this is a fun ministry too. I used I, I, I used to be an usher when I was younger at my parish when I was growing up, and I used to be an usher, and we used to hang out in the back of the church, and uh, we, we it was a lot of fun because we we give each other banter during the service, and uh, we would talk during the sermon, <laughs> and uh, and I, I don't think you ought to do that. <laughs> I don't think you ought to do that part. Don't don't. You, 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 can, you can banter with each other, right? But, but what this did was, it, first of all, it built lifelong friendships for me. I have friends to this day who were uh, ushers with me back 20 plus years ago, right? Who, who I still keep in touch with. I still call on the phone, still talk to, visit when I'm in town, right? So there's, uh, there's, there's these uh, lifelong friendships that go along with this. And there's also uh, a real opportunity to make a difference in someone's life. And it could be a difference that don't, you don't know about till later. Because I remember the very first time that I attended an Episcopal church. And I remember uh, seeing some of the books. We talked about some of our books, uh, some of the books in the pews, and thinking, oh, this is a bit overwhelming. I don't know how to use these books. I don't know what I'm doing here. I don't know how the service is supposed to go. And I remember, I remember the usher who came and said hello to me, and sat down next to me, and, and took out the worship leaflet, just like we have, took out the worship leaflet, showed me how the service was, uh, was going to move forward, or what I needed to pay attention to, right? told me where, where I could sit, where, you know, how to receive communion, all of these things. She shared with me all of these things. Her name is Beth. Still remember to this day, her name is Beth. And I shared this story uh, when, uh, after I was ordained, I was preaching in that same parish. And she was in that, she was there. And she didn't remember that that had happened. But it had happened. Right? It, it, it left an imprint on me. Right? Her kindness to me that day left an imprint on me. So we never know in ministry what kind of an impact we might have in somebody else's life. But guess what? They will know. They will know. So being an usher uh, is an opportunity uh, to, to be that person, to be that, that face of friendliness and kindness and welcome 
right? To share that love in that way, to share that love, uh, to, to make somebody feel welcome, because we never know, uh, what, if, what if somebody does stick around, right? And somebody decides, you know what, I like this place, I like St. John's, I, I wanna keep coming back. And it could be, uh, it could be due, at least in a small part, uh, for, for you saying hello, for you saying, Here, here's, how, here's our order of worship and here's how it works. Right? So, so keep that in mind. Keep that in mind when you think about maybe you're being called to be an usher. Is that something that Jesus is calling you to do? Okay. And the third ministry I want to talk about today is a, a very important ministry. Uh, we call it here, we call it our third place ministry. And that is our coffee hour ministry, serving coffee before and after the service. Right. Now, why is that so important? Well, we've talked, we've talked before about the importance of sharing a meal with someone else. We've talked about sharing a meal and how important, how impactful that can be to share a meal with somebody else. Right? Well, sharing a cup of coffee is, is a, another way to level the playing field. And we could be asking ourselves, uh, where does this name come from, third place? Because that, that, that name can sound a little, a little odd if we haven't heard it. Right? But that, comes from, that comes from Starbucks. And Starbucks says that home is the first place. Right? We, all, we all need to be in our home much of the time, we spend a lot of time at home. So that's the first place. And work is the second place because uh, that's where we need to be, right? to be able to afford everything we do in our life. We have to go to work, right? But, but what about that place that, that isn't exactly home and isn't necessary to go to like work, but it's also a place where I can go to relax and unwind and, and enjoy conversation with somebody else? Well, that's the third place. That's what, that's what Starbucks has tried to be, and that's what we try to be. We try to be that third place, that place where you can uh, feel comfortable, you can be yourself, you can, you can engage in conversation with each other. So that's where the name third place comes from. It's not your home, and it's not your work, but it's that third place, that place that feels just kind of just pleasant to just be yourself. Right? And uh, there's nothing that does that quite like a cup of coffee. Holding a cup of coffee in your hand really levels the playing field. And it, can, it can be something other than coffee. If you don't like coffee, it could be something, you can put something else in the mug, you know. Because <laughs> it's holding the physical uh, object that levels the playing field. I used to have a mentor uh, when I was uh, in the ordination process, and it, 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 it takes a lot of nerves to, to be in the ordination process. And you have lots of conversations with the bishop, and it's very intimidating. And my mentor would tell me, when you go to the bishop's office, always bring with you a cup of coffee. Why is that? Well, because then it doesn't feel like an interview. It feels like a conversation. It levels the playing field. So a cup of coffee in your hand is, is a good way to level the playing field. And I learned from that. I learned from that. And I, I used to use that technique when I would go around room to room in the hospital. I would bring a coffee cup with me because it would level the playing field. It would make the patients feel comfortable and the conversation would start flowing. Right? Because they knew I wasn't there for any, I wasn't there to interrogate them. I was there to have a conversation with them. And so that's what we have an opportunity to do in our hospitality ministry, our third place ministry out, out, out the front door here every week. And, and if you are feeling particularly called to, to be a host, right? to, to be somebody who can host that third place, who can, uh, who can set up the, uh, the coffee and the donuts, we all like a good donut, right? So, so if you're feeling particularly called to be that person, if somebody in your life has ever told you, hey, you throw a wonderful party, you throw a, a fun party, you throw a great party, right? maybe that's the voice of Jesus saying, uh, hey, this, this might be a ministry for you. Okay? So we, we hear the voice of Jesus. Right? We, we've talked about that. We want to we wanna continue to fine tune it. Right? We want to continue to fine tune our ability uh, to listen because we know uh, that God is calling us. We know that we are called to love. We're called to use that word love, even if it's uncomfortable. We're called to use that word love, and we're called to love uh, not just by word, but in action. And these are just a few of the examples, a few ways that, that we can do that. And we'll continue to look at more. And we want to continue to have, uh, to have our, our ears and our hearts open because uh, God is calling us. And we need to be prepared uh, to answer. And when we answer, we want to say yes. Amen.